If you're looking for the light at the end of the food tunnel, let Eating Light be your beacon to lightening up your cooking and improving your health. Eating Light brings to light tasty but easy recipes using pasta, grains, beans, fruits, vegetables, all of the good for you foods which anchor the base of the new food guide pyramid. For the shape of things to come, stay tuned for Eating Light. days when food was fatty, heavy, and rich. Never mind nutrition, people ate what they liked. And they still do. But now, the accent is on eating light. Eating light. Easy, fun, appetizing new ways to make light meals. Eating light for the flavor and style you want and better health through better nutrition. Eating light, the cooking show for the way you live today. Each edition of Eating Light brings you delicious, light recipes, plus tasty tips for cutting back on high-fat foods without sacrificing flavor. On this Eating Light menu, vegetable lasagna and Texas turkey meatloaf. The U.S. Department of Agriculture recently introduced the Food Pyramid. It's a chart guide to healthy eating. Following the Food Pyramid guidelines means reducing high-fat foods and making grains and vegetables a greater part of your diet. You'll find that your family can still enjoy their favorite dishes with a few light alterations. The new Food Pyramid recommends three to five daily servings of vegetables. And one trip to a market that's passionate about its produce can entice you to do at least that. Our vegetable lasagna was inspired by mounds crisp green spinach, baskets of plump young squash, tomatoes bursting with color and flavor, and bouquets of fresh basil. The lasagna begins with a tomato sauce that's light in fat, but rich in flavor. In fact, this quick light tomato sauce is one the heart-healthy Italians use most often. Cook one small onion finely chopped and two minced garlic cloves in one teaspoon of oil until they're translucent. Do not let the garlic burn or become bitter. Pour in four and a half cups peeled, chopped, fresh tomatoes, or out of season use four and a half cups drained and chopped canned plum tomatoes. Season with one teaspoon of salt if desired, a quarter teaspoon freshly ground black pepper, and a small pinch of sugar to balance the acid of the tomatoes. Tear two tablespoons of fresh basil leaves into the pot. Tearing the leaves instead of chopping them preserves the delicate bouquet of the herb. Let the sauce simmer gently for 30 minutes until it's reduced slightly. Now, for the vegetables. Drop 12 ounces of well-washed spinach, stems removed, into an empty pot. The spinach was washed, then drained lightly, but not dried. The water clinging to its leaves will cook it. Add a pinch of salt, cover the pot, and cook just until the leaves are wilted. Then drain well and set aside. Roasting vegetables gives them a deep, delicious flavor and requires a minimum amount of oil for browning. Cut two medium zucchini and three medium yellow summer squash in half crosswise. Then cut the halves into long, thin slices that will become tender with roasting. Spread them out in one layer on a non-stick baking pan. It's important to use a non-stick pan or spray a pan with non-stick spray. Otherwise, you'll have to use much more oil. It's also important to keep the slices in one layer and not too close together, so they will roast and not steam in their own juices. Brush the slices very lightly with olive oil and season with salt and pepper. Roast in a 400 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes or until the squash is lightly browned. The pieces will shrink slightly. Part skim milk ricotta will add creaminess to the lasagna without the heaviness of a fat-laden bechamel sauce what the Italians do. Push the ricotta through a strainer to smooth and lighten it. Give the ricotta a good stir and set it aside. We'll give it another Italian trick later. You'll need about three quarters of a pound of lasagna noodles, fresh or packaged, boiled for seven minutes in five quarts of rapidly boiling salted water. Cook about seven pieces at a time and remove from the boiling water with a strainer and drop immediately into a bowl of cold water to stop the cooking. 
Lay them out on clean kitchen towels in one layer so they don't stick together. When all the pasta is cooked, stir three tablespoons of boiling water into the strained ricotta cheese. This will give it a good spreading consistency and the residual starch from the pasta will help bind the sauce. All right, now you're ready to build the lasagna. Spoon a thin layer of tomato sauce on the bottom of a 13 by nine inch low-sided pan. Glass, ceramic, or metal are fine. Add one layer of noodles, overlapping them slightly so the layers will stay separated. Add a little more sauce, a layer of roasted squash, and one of the drained spinach. Spoon on the creamy but low-fat ricotta and three quarters of a pound of part skim mozzarella that's been grated or finely chopped. Scatter whole fresh basil leaves over the cheese and then another layer of noodles. Continue layering, saving some sauce and some mozzarella for the top. Sprinkle one half cup freshly grated Parmesan cheese over the top layer and bake at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. Let the cooked lasagna rest for 10 minutes before cutting and just wait for the raves. By lightening the tomato sauce and using part skim milk cheeses, you can enjoy eating light and nutritious vegetable lasagna as part of your food pyramid menu. Following the food pyramid will often mean making substitutions in your regular recipes. Meatloaf is a standard family favorite, but using low-fat ground turkey in place of beef egg whites in place of whole eggs, and good grainy oats in place of breadcrumbs keeps our Texas meatloaf within the food pyramid's guidelines for healthier eating. Begin with one and a half pounds of ground turkey. Add two egg whites and beat them in well. Stir in one half cup of barbecue sauce. Look for one that has no added fat. Most of the good ones don't. Now beat in three quarters cup of old fashioned oats, which gives the meatloaf texture and provides a portion of the grains so important to a healthy lifestyle. Barbecue sauce and chilies say Texas, and our meatloaf has both. Add a four ounce can of chopped jalapenos, including all the flavorful juices in the can. Stir in one medium chopped onion and one medium chopped pepper that have been sauteed for four minutes until tender with three minced garlic cloves in two tablespoons of oil. Mix well. Since the finished dish will be so much leaner than a traditional meatloaf, spray the pan with no stick cooking spray so the finished meatloaf will release. Spoon the meat into the pan, spread it around to even it out, and give the pan a couple of good whacks on the counter to settle. Bake in a 350 degree oven for one hour. When the meatloaf is cooked, tip the pan over the sink to drain off the excess liquid. Place a serving platter over the pan and invert. Let the meatloaf rest for about 10 minutes and then spoon on more barbecue sauce. Using turkey in place of ground beef makes Eating Light's Texas Meatloaf a healthy alternative that meets the USDA pyramid recommendation of lowering fat in your diet. Texas turkey meatloaf and vegetable lasagna. These recipes are just two of the ways Eating Light responds to the need for real food that's healthy and delicious. Great meals with a light touch that are fun to prepare on Eating Light. Look for Eating Light only on the Television Food Network. You are what you eat, and what you eat is what the Television Food Network is all about. It's the world's first 24-hour cable network devoted exclusively to food, glorious food. Not just how to eat it, but how to choose it, prepare it, present it, enjoy it, and how it affects your health. TVFN is also about fun and excitement, about travel and the world of exotic and ethnic cuisines you've yet to discover. But mostly it's about you and your family and the one thing we all have in common, food. The Television Food Network. It's good for you. Here's another food-wise tip from the TV Food Network. Is refreezing food safe? Believe it or not, it's okay to refreeze most foods. Just make sure you handle the food properly and it's not contaminated. The only major effect refreezing will have is some loss of texture and flavor. 
However, you should use some caution when you do refreeze food, since freezing and thawing can make food more vulnerable to deterioration. Make sure your food still has ice crystals or is no warmer than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also important that the food has not been out of the freezer for more than 48 hours. And don't refreeze shellfish or cook dishes containing cream because they're just too susceptible to bacteria. So remember, handle food with care.